Hello everyone, welcome to the numerical methods class. In this class, we are going to learn about the Newton codes integration formulas. These are the uh, first numerical integration formulas that we are going to learn. And this chapter is chapter 21 here and as well as in uh, the book. And you can follow the next slides, following slides, uh, to be able to learn about these Newton codes integration formulas. When we have continuous functions that we are going to integrate, we can use Newton codes formulas by simply um, having a ba more basic for function for the actual function, let's say. So let's say this is our uh, actual function that we want to integrate, but because it is difficult to integrate this, we want to simplify this integration. That's why we want to simplify this function actually. So we want to represent this function by another function, which is in this form. It's basically, it has basically the terms of axis with an increasing order you can see and if we write this function instead of this and represent this approximately by this one then we can integrate this one and it will equal to integration of the actual fx function in here you can see a first order polynomial a straight line you is used as an approximation let's say this is our actual function this fx but we want to simplify it using only the first two terms. If we use only these terms, it means it's linear. So you can get a linear function, as you can see here, this one, between A and B ranges. Then you will get the integration as the area underneath this function. So you can easily take the integration of this it's basically a0x plus a1x square, the integration. So take the integration that gives us an approximation for this function between these points. But as you can see here, there is a large difference that we are not able to consider or calculate. As a second option, we can consider a second order polynomial. In this scenario, we will actually have the function of the two, three terms. So a2x square, for instance, here. That means we will have a second order polynomial. In this scenario, this is our original function, this one. And this dashed one is this function, actually. Then we take the integration of this one to get the area underneath. And you can see it covers more area compared to the linear one. So it covers these parts as well. It's just missing this part, but having a little bit excess area over here. But it's a better representation, as you can see. So if the uh, function is complex or have high degree curvature, then we need a higher order approximation like this. And then we can get the integration by this approximate function, taking the integration of this. Another Newton codes approximation for integration is using piecewise functions. So again, we have this difficult function to integrate. And we want to represent it with another function, but this time this function will be piecewise. It means that we will have a series of polynomials applied piecewise to the function or data over segments of constant length. Let's see here. So basically we have the actual function, but instead of using it, we are using piecewise functions, linear functions, as you can see here, zeroth order functions here, for instance, at each point. So for those, we define some points on the function, actual function. Then just draw lines such that the lengths will be the same, starting from the beginning, A, and dividing maybe into some n, n number of segments. So this is basically the strip method that we introduced in chapter 20. And a series of zero order polynomials are applied, as you can see. Not a continuous one function that we showed in the previous slide, but here piecewise functions. And another option is, instead of using lines, horizontal lines, which is zero-order polynomial, we can use linear polynomials, first-order polynomials. Again, piecewise, so three of them, for example, here, but they are linear. So in this scenario, again, we will get the area under these, basically just taking the integration of these functions in between these ranges. Then, if you sum these, you will get uh, the integration of the, form, uh, the function the actual function as an approximation. So we have three straight line segments used to approximate 
the integral in this one. So these are the piecewise function approximations using Newton codes. The Newton codes formulations also classified into two areas, closed and open forms, we can say. The closed forms have data points at the beginning and end of the limits of integration, and these are known. So basically, we will take the integration between A and B, and these are the beginning and end points, and we have data in between. And we will actually, in this chapter 21, talk about these closed form applications or closed form numerical integration formulas. Also, there are open forms. And in these open forms, integration limits extend beyond the range of the data. So we have data inside again, but we don't know we it's it's inside, but we don't know the limits, let's say. So we have only this data, and we we don't know we don't have the value of fx for a and b ranges, but we want to take the integration between a and b. So these are good for extrapolation. And open Newton codes formulas are not generally used for definite integration. So it, these closed forms are preferred because we have the function values of the limits. These are important. But this can be utilized as well for evaluating improper integrals as well as for the solution of ordinary differential equations. As we said earlier, in this chapter we will talk about these closed forms, closed form Newton codes formulations. But in the following slides, we will quickly give you the open form uh, formulas or methods and also class closed form methods in a summary. Then we will de have the details of the closed form equations or formulas in the following slides. In this slide, you can see the methods and the formulas for the open form methods of Newton codes integ integration approximations. And we said early, earlier in the previous slide that the open integration methods can extend the beyond the limits of the data. So the ranges are not known, but we have data inside, but it extends beyond the limits. And the methods can be defined depending on the number of segments that we use to divide the integration area. If we use two segments for integration, it's called midpoint method. And the formulation is this. So basically here we only have one point. But, you know, um, the ranges A and B actually are some points as well, but we don't know the function values of these. And we have only one point in the middle as well. So we need to have three points anyway in this because it is two segments. But we only hold, know the function value of the midpoint. So we can only use that. And the truncation error is on the order of three. You can see here. And it uses the second order uh, derivative actually in the truncation. So before the second order terms, we have them, but second order and afterwards we don't have them in the formulation, let's say. So the second one, when we have three segments, that means we have actually four points, but the uh, lowest and highest ones, B and A, we don't know the function values of them, but we know the function values for the two points in between, which are x1 and x2, divide by 2. This is the approximation for three segments for open formulas. And the error is again in the third order, and the derivative is the second derivative as well. When we have four segments, now we have three points. Again, the ranges are not known as the function values. And so we have three points, divide by 3, with this formulation. And here you can see the order is increasing to 5. And the derivative is fourth derivative. Similarly, in the five segment case, we have four points, non points. We use this formulation, and the order of the error is five, and the derivative in the error, truncation error formulation is fourth derivative. Finally, this sixth, when we have six segments, we can use five, we need to use five points with this formulation, and the order is seven and the derivative is sixth order, you can see that after each two, uh, the, the, the order of the error is actually increasing with one magnitude. So from three to five, from five to seven. And these two have same order of error values. So you can think that this can be better, but actually because the magnitudes are the same, we can think of using the simple one. These are the simple one between these and between these as well. So you can consider 
a method like that using this or this one uh, it is much simpler but still have the same magnitude of error compared to this one as well so these are the open methods but we are not going to show these in this chapter we will show the closed methods so let's check them in the following slides and before that uh, so successive pairs of the formulas have the same order error we set here and the even segment odd point formulas are usually the methods of preference because they require fewer points to attain the same accuracy as the odd segment even point formulas actually even segment means this and this and this these are preferred as we said earlier same magnitude but simpler formulations and the open formulas are not often used for definite integration so not the topic of this chapter however they have utility for analyzing improper in integrals so let's go to next slide and see the closed form formulas the newton codes closed form formulas have same idea of having different segments number of segments to uh, have the numerical integration and these are from first order to higher order polynomials newton codes closed formulas so for one segment we will have two points now we know the um, lower and upper ranges actually these fx0 and fx1 are maybe these values only um, and we divide it by two again so this is very similar to the two segment case in the open uh, form formulas and this is called trapezoidal rule we will give the details of these in the following slides uh, each of these but here is just a summary and you can see that truncation error is in the third order and the second derivative exists here when when we have two segments we will have three points and it's called simpson's one over three rule and the formulation is like this with three points and it's in fifth order the error and the derivative is fourth derivative and the for the three segment case we have four points so we always have one plus point you can see from the segment and plus one points for n segments that's kind of the formulation and it's called simpson's three divided by eight rule 38 rule and this is the, fo the formulation with four data points of uh, the function let's say and we have the fifth order again it's similar to this one and fourth derivative in the truncation error similar to this one just these magnitudes are different so for three and four you can see the order magnitude magnitudes are the same for the truncation error so we can prefer the simpler one this is a simpler one because we have three data first and formulation is simpler but the error magnitudes are about the same so again the even points will be preferred here uh, rather than the out point cases and for four segments it's called bull's rule and we have five points this is the formulation and we have the seventh order in the truncation error and sixth order of derivative and as for five segments we have six points and this is the formulation for that with six points it's getting longer as you can see the order is the same as the fifth point five point case but the formulation is more complicated so we can consider this because the magnitudes of the orders are seven for both and the derivatives are six derivatives so the trapezoidal rule has the lowest order of error third order lowest accuracy accuracy you can see third order Simpson's 1, 3, and 3, 8 rules have the same error, fourth order here. Um, actually, fifth order, we can say. Similarly, the 5 and 6 point formulas have the same order error, sixth order, or seventh order, you can see here. Yeah, the sixth order or fourth order are the derivatives, and the h orders are 5 and 7. The, this general characteristic holds for the higher point formulas it leads to the result that even segment out point formulas one three rule and bulls rule are usually the methods of preference so we, we can prefer this over this one because orders are the same but the formulation is simple and for these two cases orders are the same but the formulation of this is simple so we can prefer this instead of this one so this is basic idea and we will talk about these three in the following slides in more details.